It's that time once again, press fans. Coming to you from Altman Studios in downtown Brentwood to your ears wherever you are. This is Clocked In with the Press. I'm Jake Menez, here with press editor Kyle Sazmanski on sports. Hello! And today we'll be talking about agriculture, algae blooms, and campaign reform. But first, let's hear a quick word from this episode's sponsor. This episode of Clocked In with the Press is sponsored by Bill Brent Ford at 8100 Brentwood Boulevard, right here in Brentwood. For award-winning sales, service, and all your Ford needs, think Bill Brandt Ford at 8100 Brentwood Boulevard. Thanks once again to our sponsor. Let's get into it. The Delta Protection Commission, a California state agency working to protect and enhance agriculture, recreation, cultural, and natural resources of the Delta, announced that Bruce Blodgett of Elk Grove has been hired as executive director effective August 8th. He replaces Eric Vink, who is retiring effective early August. The Delta Protection Commission is a 15-member body formed in 1992, to regulate local government land use in the Delta region. The commission works to ensure the Delta is protected and enhanced as required by state law. And the commission is composed primarily of local agency officials, including county supervisors, city council members, and reclamation district trustees, as well as state agency representatives. Blodgett has served as executive director of San Joaquin Farm Bureau since 2005. He has managed the organization's efforts to represent San Joaquin County agriculturalists and reported to a 53-member board of directors. Sacramento County Supervisor Don Notelli, current chairman of the commission, said, quote, The people of the Delta region live in one of the most special places in the country, a place that the U.S. Congress has recognized as nationally significant when it designated the Delta as a national heritage area in 2019. We look forward to Bruce's leadership and efforts in continuing to carry out all the important work of the commission, end quote. In keeping with the water theme but moving a little locally, the Contra Costa Health Department urges anyone who boats, fishes, or swims in or around Discovery Bay to be cautious after large blooms of blue-green algae were discovered there. A bloom is a buildup of blue-green algae, or cyanobacteria, that creates a green, blue-green, white, or brown coloring on the surface of slow-moving waterways. Contact with the toxin produced by the bloom can make people and pets sick. The State Water Resource Control Board recently sampled water at Discovery Bay after a person and a dog in separate incidents each developed minor symptoms consistent with exposure to cyanobacteria toxin after contact with the water. Sampling revealed elevated levels of harmful algae. Officials have provided cautious signs to Reclamation District 800, which is Discovery Bay's area, to post at the marina in Discovery Bay. Everyone should follow the instructions on the signs and stay away from algae and scum in the water, according to officials. They are advising to keep children and pets on shore, away from the blooms, and do not touch or handle algae in the water or scum on the shoreline. It is also unsafe to drink or cook with water in these areas or to eat fish or shellfish caught in or near them. And this is not the first time that we've heard about this, Jake. Discovery Bay's Willow Lake was sealed off for a couple of weeks in May for an experiment to reduce the number of blue-green algae blooms. And it was being conducted and monitored by two separate companies, and it's expected to last about three months. And the initial treatment was going to start on May 23rd. So... Right, that's, you know, that's a month ago on the dot. And so as I recall, once that first treatment was completed, they were going to do some follow-up treatments to specific areas with lower doses. And the project manager, Benjamin Chen, had said that they would allow for like eight treatments, give or take, on that current schedule or on that schedule. And treatment results will be at a Apparent within one to three days, Chen said, the lake's condition will continue to improve over time after treatment and with subsequent low doses. The main goal of the treatment is to keep cytotoxin levels in the lake Below warning advisories for the state of California, Carson and his team said they will monitor the condition in the lake and surrounding bays throughout the summer for the bacteria and a variety of other environmental parameters. I remember the one other element of it that was a challenge at the time back in May was that it was going to cost $30,000 for that treatment plan to be implemented. And as I recall, uh, the Discovery Bay Community Foundation president, Jim Mattinson, had been part of, you know, getting that thing off the ground and had said that they'd gone to, you know, Reclamation District 800, who we'd mentioned earlier, and asked them to put up $15,000, so half of that amount. The other thing that Mattinson had said at the time back in May was that the University of Massachusetts, of all places, had reached out asking to send equipment to monitor the air particles released by the algae in the summer months when blooms at their height. So it's really a local effort, but it's getting help from all over as well. Yeah, and this is obviously an issue that's been ongoing again for years, and hopefully these new technologies, these new studies can kind of curtail it, because I know that it's a big deal for Discovery Bay. This is the prime time to obviously get out on the water, and it's just kind of unfortunate that this kind of has to keep everyone on land for a short time. It's The good thing is that it's not a permanent thing. Uh, it will eventually subside, and then people can go about their summer, so let's hope it doesn't last too long. What do you say we have a little sports talk? All right, let's do it. Did you know, Jake, that Liberty has a new football coach? 
Mike Cable is Liberty's new football coach. He has spent the previous four years at Prospect High School in Saratoga. And he comes in with a bunch of experience. He's used to building a program. In his first year at Prospect, the Panthers went 2-8, and eight, but they went 5-5 five and five the following season, then 5-0 and oh in the spring of 2021. At Liberty, he's inheriting a program that went 5-5 five and five against a grueling schedule in the fall of 2021 and 3-2 and two in the Bay Valley Athletic League. Returning from that team is dual-threat quarterback Nate Bell, who's entering his third year at starting quarterback, and Liberty's leading wide receiver, Ryan McHenry, will also return, as will defensive stars Ty Turnus and Daryl Carr. Cable has been impressed with the number of players that have come out to practice so far this season. He said it's actually kind of overwhelming. There have been over 120 players out there, so many guys are getting in there, and there are a lot of standouts. Nate Bell, obviously the star, is the person that they listen to, but there are some other leaders starting to emerge. This is a big development for Liberty football. Anytime that there's a new coach, it's, it brings kind of a fresh energy. He obviously replaces Matt Hapes, who stepped down to spend more time with his family. Before Matt Hapes, it was Ryan Partridge, who was in some sense a legendary coach because he led Liberty to its first state title ever. So in a sense, Mike Cable has big shoes to fill. But again, there's no question that he's going to be ready for the job. He's got fresh energy. I understand the players are really buying into his program. And it's going to be fun to see what he brings to the program. And one of the more promising elements as well, of course, is that Cable back in Saratoga took a program that went from what you can call a pretty abysmal season and brought them to a more winning place. And Liberty's last season was by no means terrible. It was pretty middling, I would say, at worst. So to start with, you know, already starting with a leg up there and some of these returning players that already starts, I think he's got nothing but great times ahead. Good things are ahead for Liberty, I think. All right, Jake, do you like cornhole? Because there's a new cornhole club in Brentwood. Few entertainment options existed in the early stages of COVID-19, and during that time, Ray Chevera and his family went outside and started playing cornhole. Eventually, their neighbors got involved, and it morphed into something bigger. They found a literal name for themselves, the Brentwood Bombers, and they began playing and having outdoor tournaments at Harvest Park Bowling Alley before the management change. When that happened, the Brentwood Bombers moved to Four Legs Brewing at 2010 Elkins Way in Brentwood, and that's where they are today, playing every Wednesday at 6 p.m. And he said that cornhole players, quote, were traveling to Stockton to play, and we wanted to just rep our own name in our community. Now, it's important to remember, Jake, that Bombers are a club, not a league. There are two different groups to this club, a lower group for the less experienced players and an upper group for the better, more experienced cornhole players. On a given week, the estimated group that shows up is between 50 and 100 people. And there's no long-term commitment to this club, so you can show up one week and then leave the next week if you don't really like it. And also, there's a little bit of a financial component. There's a $10 buy-in for the lower division and a $20 buy-in for the uppers, with the top three teams getting 80% of the total pot. So if you want to check it out, head over to Four Legs Brewing at 2010 Elkins Way in Brentwood. That's where they are every Wednesday at 6 p.m. I'm really amazed how all of a sudden Cornhole really is a growing sport in this area. Of course, we had the cornhole tournament, the bags, bite and brews. And then of course, next week, Oakley's having a cornhole tournament as part of their Summerfest celebration. We'll talk about a little bit later on. Absolutely. I believe there was 200 people that showed up to that cornhole tournament last week. So it just goes to show you how popular the sport is getting here in East County and beyond. And it seems to be very much a regional thing. I have some friends on the East Coast where they're having the same surge, but with bocce ball. (laughs) So it seems that those seem to be the competing factions. All right, and speaking of top players, let's talk a little bit about some Bay Valley Athletic League All-Stars. The league recently announced the Tennis and Golf All-Stars. Axel Scott of Deer Valley is the MVP of tennis, while Gavin Wagner of Liberty High School is the golf MVP. A handful of other tennis stars include Braden Gibson of Liberty, Patrick Cruz of Heritage, Ruben Sandoval of Antioch, Noah Florentis of Deer Valley, and other golf stars include Jared Steele of Deer Valley, Trevor Hopple of Heritage, Andrew Cray of Liberty, Luke Copland of Heritage, Brandon Newberry of Heritage, Luke Wilcox of Antioch, and Sammy Shire of Antioch. And of course, you can head over to thepress.net for those complete lists. Let's kick it down to the kids, should we, Jake? The East County Little League Pirates District 4 team recently won the championship. The Pirates won the District 4 Tournament of Champions. The squad was trailing 8-2 to 
going into the bottom of the fifth inning of the championship game, but bounced back to beat Panola Hercules 9-8. to And the Pirates were nearly perfect this season, Jake, finishing the regular season 19-1. and what an incredible comeback just in that game, you know, to go from 8-2 to two and then to 9-8 to eight in four innings. It's such an impressive move. Absolutely, and congratulations to them. It's great to see our local team succeed. Speaking of local teams succeeding, the Warriors of the NBA won the NBA title. They defeated Boston three games to two to win their sixth championship in franchise history. Steph Curry was named the finals MVP. Fun fact here, Jake, Curry has averaged 27.3 points, 6 assists, and 5.8 rebounds in 34 games in the NBA Finals in his career. A championship parade was held on Monday. And all in all, it's a good thing for Dub Nation. This was the Warriors' sixth championship in 11 Finals appearances. You know, every year I say is going to be the year I get into basketball, and I think, you know, next season is going to have to be the one for me. After seeing just bits and pieces of this season, just what an incredible, you know, dynamic, exciting thing to watch. And it's going to be interesting to see, can the Warriors keep their team intact? Because they have a lot of free agents that are kind of up in the air right now. They're going to have to pour a lot of money into this team. But they've done it in the past, so there's no question that they're up for the challenge. I'll give you a small recommendation for you, Rap Sports, Kyle. There's a new Netflix film called The Hustle. It stars Adam Sandler. It's made you know, in partnership with the NBA. And it's, it stars all these real-life basketball players. And you know, it's... it's, it's it's a comedy, but it's not your typical Adam Sandler slapstick comedy. It's a little bit more refined, shall we say. <laughs> but it's a terrific movie, and anybody who's a basketball fan, I think, would really love it. Like I said, there's lots of real players in it. There's lots of inside baseball would be the term, I guess, but inside basketball, really and truly. Yeah, and if any of our listeners have seen that, give us a shout at podcastsabrowandpress.com. We're going to take one more short break to hear from today's sponsor, but when we come back, we'll talk about recent vehicle crashes and campaign finance reform in Brentwood. Stick around. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Bill Brandt Ford at 8100 Brentwood Boulevard. Speaking personally, I've used the service center at Bill Brandt Ford several times, and I've always been impressed by their commitment to the customer. I used to have this real lemon of a Ford Fusion that I bought from a less reputable dealer, and Dave, the service advisor at Bill Brandt, moved mountains to keep that thing running. My younger sister bought a car from Bill Brandt a couple years ago, and their finance department worked with her budget, and now she drives a nicer car than me. But don't just take my word for it. Bill Brandt Ford is the recipient of the prestigious President's Award from the Ford Motor Company. Only 340 of the roughly 5,000 dealerships nationwide can say the same. Locally, the community has voted them Best of Brentwood for sales and service. Bill Brandt aims to give customers the best dealership experience possible. So what are you waiting for? Give them a call today at 925-634-3551 for all your sales and service needs or visit BillBrantFord.com. That's Bill, B-R-A-N-D-T, Ford.com. Thanks once again to this week's sponsor. We're going to get into our last two stories of the day. Two people died and nine others were injured in separate vehicle crashes in Byron and Oakley last week. One person died and nine more were injured in the first crash, which authorities said was caused by a drunk driver on June 15th on Byron Highway near Camino Diablo Road. The California Highway Patrol said the 5.40 p.m. crash occurred when a suspected drunk driver of an Acura sedan traveling southbound on Byron Highway allowed his vehicle to cross double yellow lines and into the path of a Chevrolet Suburban carrying nine people, causing both vehicles to careen off the roadway and crash into telephone poles off the roadway. One of the nine occupants of the Suburban died and eight others sustained moderate injuries, authorities said. The Acura driver suffered minor injuries, was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence, and booked at the Martinez Detention Facility. Authorities did not immediately release the names of the victims of the suspected drunk driver. The California Highway Patrol is asking anyone with information to give them a call at 925-646-4980. About 24 hours later, at 5 p.m. on June 16th, Brian Ortiz, 38, of Oakley, died in a motorcycle crash on Laurel Road and Harvest Drive. Oakley police have released few details but believe speed was a factor. The agency said in a statement, quote, Oakley police traffic investigators have determined that speed was a factor in this fatal collision. Investigators have identified witnesses and other involved persons and are still working to determine exactly how this collision occurred. Obviously, this is a pair of unfortunate incidents and sympathies to all involved. All right, Kyle, now here is our big story of the week. The Brentwood City Council voted 3-0 to zero to direct staff to look into an ordinance that would limit campaign contributions as part of campaign reform. Mayor Joel Bryant and Vice Mayor Johnny Rodriguez were absent from the meeting. The proposal was brought up during the June 14th meeting jointly by Council Members Jovita Mendoza and Karen Rary. The goal of potential campaign finance limits and reform would be to even the playing field among all candidates, according to Rary. 
She wants part of the reform to stipulate that donations could be pledged only during a campaign year to prevent the potential stockpiling of funds by candidates during non-election years. Following the public comment portion of the discussion, the present council of members voted to limit donations to be accepted during the campaign year with a limit of $500 from individuals, while also examining limits on political action committee contribution to candidates. One resident, identified only as Rod, expressed concern over campaign donations in previous elections, citing funds that Joel Bryant had received in previous campaigns from developer Sino Homes. During the 2020 mayoral race, Bryant had accepted a $20,000 donation from Sierra Pacific Properties Incorporated, which is owned by Sino Homes, sparking backlash from the community. Bryant had denied any impropriety, stating that no seat was worth his integrity. And obviously, this is another good example of the public speaking up and the government listening. They spoke up. They expressed their feelings to the city council. The city council brought this issue forward, and it looks like they're going to come back in July to finalize these plans. But hopefully, this makes the people happy, and this is what it's all about, democracy. This is absolutely a big story just in the sense that it's part of a larger trend against, you know, money in politics, but it is also just the beginning of this particular version of it because, like you said, Broadway City Council will continue to develop how they're going to go about it. This has also been something that, you know, Councilmember Rary has worked on for a while because she'd run against Bryant in the 2020 election, and as I recall, she had returned some funds that had been donated to her because she didn't want to seem like there was any sense of impropriety coming from her as well. All right, this week, Jake, we have the wedding planner. For people who are getting married, it talks all about the big day, how to prep your skin, where to order cakes, and also how to have a relaxing, carefree day on one of the biggest days of your life. So check it out. We have some upcoming events that we're looking forward to. The Big Break Regional Shoreline in Oakley is hosting an All Abilities Day from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Tuesday, June 28th. Visitors, assisted by staff or exploring at their own pace, will be able to travel along paved trails with stations to touch, fur, listen to birds, sketch wildlife, watch the Delta water for animal activity, or paint the view. The program will have indoor and outdoor options, all wheelchair accessible. It's free of charge and visitors can come at any time during the program hours. No registration is required. Big Break Regional Shoreline is located at 69 Big Break Road off Oakley's Main Street. For more information, call 510-544-3050. I'd like to mention, you know, one more fun summer activity that's coming up as well, where Oakley will be hosting their first annual summer fest in Civic Center Plaza on Main Street from O'Hare Avenue to Vintage Parkway. It'll be a six-time event that's family-friendly and is replacing their annual cityhood celebration that they had done since 2005, I believe. The festival will include live music on the main stage, a vintage car show on Main Street, a giant kids area, local artists and makers, delicious food vendors, a 5K run, a cornhole tournament, and m- much more. There will not be fireworks unlike the previous event, citing safety concerns, according to city manager Josh McMurray. You can check out the website at www.oakleysummerfest.com to see the full list of events. Should be a fun day, Jake. You think you'll be attending? You know, I've got a busy day that day. I'm trying to pack in my summer, but I think I'm going to try and make an appearance. It sounds like a great time. I've got one more thing I'll talk about, Kyle, before we ride off into the sunset. Be sure to tune in on Tuesday for a conversation with Greg Reynoso, a local chef who's preparing to open his own restaurant, Taste His Kitchen. You may have seen his food truck around town, or maybe you've even seen him in a recent Ruffles commercial alongside LeBron James. Come back next week to hear me sit down with him and our publisher, Greg Robinson. Coming to your ears July 5th, Jake and the Two Gregs. And that's it for today's episode of Clocked In with the Press. We appreciate you taking time to listen in, and we look forward to speaking with you in the future. If you would like to read more news stories of East Contra Costa County, you can do so through our website at thepress.net or through our Twitter and Instagram at Press Clocked In. Be sure to tune in again next week for all your local news and sports highlights and contact us with any thoughts that you have at podcast at brentwoodpress.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll speak to you all next time. This is Kyle and Jake clocking clocking out. out. Once again, I'd like to thank this week's sponsor, Bill Brandt Ford, located at 8100 Brentwood Boulevard. Whether you're looking to buy a new Ford, a used Ford, or get some work done on your Ford, you want Bill Brandt Ford. Give them a call today at 925-634-3551. That number again is 925-634-3551. Or visit them online at BillBrandtFord.com. That's Bill Brandt, B-R-A, ndtford.com.